basically like a full walkthrough of the whole record and I'm really stoked about it because I never get to do this. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome Raiders. Okay, uh, actually here, I'll show you. This is, this is the record. I'm like really stoked about it. It came out on May 8th. It's beautiful and vi on vinyl, like, like translucent. I'm like so stoked about that. <laughs> I feel like I show this on every stream because I'm just like really excited about it. Um, cool. Well, I have a, I have like a lot of music to get through, so I think I'm just going to dive into it. Um, yeah, it is cool. Okay, what's up, chat? How's it going? <laughs> Discord crew, shout out. Um, okay, so um, the first track that I'm going to go through, basically I think what I'm going to do is I'll play the whole track. This is just an introduction, so it's like there's not a whole lot happening, but um, I'll, I'll get through this pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, so it, I'll, I'll basically like play the whole track through once, and then I'll dissect it, show you how I did it and all that. So again, this first one's going to be pretty simple, but we'll get through it. Okay, here we go. Again, like I said, it's not like there's not a crazy amount of stuff happening here, but um oh actually I forgot. Um Does that work? Okay, cool. Is that chat big enough? I think you guys can still kinda read it. <laughs> um okay, so this is this is Ableton Live. This is how I record pretty much everything. Um I've been using Ableton since I think like version six or something like that. Um Cool. So there, there's maybe like a couple different parts uh, going on here, and um, yeah, just making sure we're still good here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, it's mostly, it's it's mostly based around this piano part, which is actually uh, taken from the end of the album. So this song called Better Days. So I took that took that one piano part and kind of reintroduced it in the beginning as a means to kind of like, you know, re like make it cyclical, if that makes sense. So I'll just kind of run through some of the parts. So this is, this is just like a basic piano. <laughs> Glad you guys are enjoying the emotes. <laughs> Also, uh, shout out to Twitch. They really kind of like uh, helped helped me out on this one, um, getting everything set up and all that with all the emotes and loyalty badges and all that fun stuff. Okay, cool. So that's just like a basic piano part. Um, it's actually based here. I'll unfreeze this. Um, it's based on this um, this one uh, library called Alicia's Keys. So it's, I guess it's modeled after Alicia Keys like piano or something like that, I don't know. But I, I like to record with it at like really, like kind of mid-range velocity. I don't know if you can see this down here. Um, it's pretty low, so like, here, let, let me maybe just for, for context, let me show you what this sounds like super loud. It doesn't have the same kind of quality as like, it's just a little more subdued, a little, a little bit quieter, you know? Um, and this is sort of true for like a lot of stuff that I did on, on this album. So I, I don't, I won't need to kind of like reshow that with every track, but, um, and then there's some melodies on top of this that, and I think they're like doubled pianos. Yeah. Oh, but one's the, one's like an electric piano. Thank you. 
Oh, and the, the other thing that I did here, which this is something I do a lot, I'll, I'll like record delays, like and print them in audio. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun to kind of like hear this, um, uh, you know, solo, solo it out. I mean, that's, that's kind of the part of the fun of like this whole uh, like stream today is like to really kind of dive into the details. Uh, so for those of you that have already listened, like listened to the record like many times, like this is cool. Um, also, <laughs> I wonder if anybody in the chat can tell me how to turn off uh, all, like audio notifications for like follows because like every time somebody follows me, uh, it's just it, I get this like super obnoxious <laughs> thing in my ears. But basically, okay, so like I I, re I recorded the delay and printed it into audio. So like here you go. That's on its own, and here's like with. Uh, Okay, uh, Athena, cool, I'll, I'll do that in a second. Yeah, so I, I'm actually using, um, I'm actually using uh, Streamlabs. I don't know if that changes anything, but. So this is the piano with that delay kind of in there. This is a delay on its own. It's a subtle thing. It's just meant to like, kind of like be in the background, you know? Okay, and then, um, actually that, that's kind of how I started the song. Like I had this like super long delay that I reversed and this is how the album actually starts. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll change that setting in a second. Cool, and that, that, that was it, basically. Uh, there actually is a little bit of strings um, here. This is a contact library called, um, uh, oh, here, let me just unfreeze this. It is the uh, Spitfire Albion Tundra. Again, it's this one uh, effect called Ricochet, which I really like here. It's just like a really interesting thing. Um, Oh, f <laughs> felt good in the chilies. I I'd say this intro is actually pretty quick. I mean, this is really just meant to be like a quick, you know, little introduction to the album, basically. Kind of set the tone. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I might as well, since I'm uh, I'm in this, I might show you guys uh, some, like an idea that I ended up not using, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up in a second. So this is also Albion Tundra. Just like a simple melody in the background, and then all together. Um, oh, and just real quick, there's some Junos here as well. Just I think it's they're just playing the mel the main melody of the. Again, pretty pretty simple thing. Um, okay, so let, let me show you this idea that didn't make it to the album. So, okay, I had this idea of there, there's like a little like uh, moment of silence there, and uh, and and I actually want I, I had this idea of like creating this really abrasive, obnoxious sound as a means to like kind of jolt you and like kind of like uh, like play with expectations because the album is actually pretty mellow, but I. I like I had this idea of doing something like that. So let me just show you the idea that didn't make it. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of silly, but like it was just kind of a, a thing that I wanted to try. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, one thing about uh, Ableton in these sessions is that they are super dense. So sometimes they take like a while to load. So I'm gonna get started on on the next one on Boomerang. Um, so okay, let me save that and let me figure out the sound as well. <laughs> yeah, like uh, RAP uh, headphones, headphone users. I don't know.
Okay. I, I th thanks, guys. I, I I think I was able to fix that. Um, yeah. Basically, I had it set to only monitor my ears. So this has actually been going on for like like months now. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see. While this is loading, let me get into some questions here. Um, do you EQ out everything 100% uh, on all tracks? Um, oh, do you mean like uh, in terms of like, yeah, um, like filtering things down to fit? Um, I, th I don't know if that I really did it much in this one because it's so simple, but I, I do that a lot actually. Oh, actually, I'm still getting sound, so maybe I didn't fix that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, and uh, what got you originally started in Ableton? Um, well, I was already I was already producing, so so it was like it was just like it was the best tool at the time that I could find. I've been using Cubase for a while, and. Like that, that's fine, it's, it's a good tool, but like there's something about Ableton that just kind of clicked for me. Like it's just very good for uh, like electronic music and MIDI and a lot of stuff like that. So I, I just kind of like, you know, went, uh, went deep basically. Um, yeah, I highly recommend Ableton. I mean, it, there's a bit of a, a like a, a steep learning curve, but once you get into it, I think it's worth it. Um, cool. Oh, do you uh, the do you always work standing up? Um, yes, when I'm when I'm like actually like recording, yes, it's uh, yeah, it's it's like it's something I switched to. Like I, I was spending a lot of time sitting down, and I'm like I kind of like being able to. I don't. You can kind of see from my studio, I have like stuff spread around, so it's just easy to move around, and like I have everything plugged in all the time, and it was just like, you know, just you know, jumping around. Um, you know, different instruments and whatnot. So it, it just made sense to me. And also it helps me, um, it basically helps me like, like focus more in a, in a weird way, because if I get tired, then it's like, well, then I, I know it's time to take a break. So it, it kind of works out. I know some people get like really preachy about <laughs> like standing desks. And I'm not that way. Like it's just what works for me. Like I'm not, I'm not going to say it's like for everybody, but um, I'm into it. Okay. Let me, um, I'm I'm actually gonna so this is the next song. It's called Boomerang. It's featuring Luna Shadows. She's awesome, and um, I'll uh, I'm I'm going to I'm just gonna play the whole thing again, and uh, and then we'll get into it. So here you go.
<laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, the song the song is a little bit sad, but um, you know, I kind of wanted to, yeah, I kind of wanted to start the album off with that tone. And, and by the way, thank you for the subs. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, Juno making an appearance. I, I'm glad I, I, I added those emotes because. <laughs> okay. Um. Cool. I'm. I'm. Before I get into some questions, I'm, I'm gonna just. Uh, I'm just gonna go part by part. I think um, I'll just start from the top, like with drums. So. You know, uh, so some of this information will be redundant, so maybe I'll I'll dwell on it a little bit here, and then uh, in other songs I'll kind of skip through a little bit quicker. So, um, I do things a little bit differently with Ableton. Um, so, so if you'll, you'll you'll notice that I have a drum brain here, uh, which. Oh, great. My computer is... There we go. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's funny because this REC Tool 2016, uh, I, I need to update that. Uh, basically, like the, the idea is that I created this like elaborate drum rack uh, that I added all my favorite samples to, and then I can program everything in like one MIDI clip. So, um, or here, let me see. I mean, this this drum part is like so simple. It's really just like a kick and snare, so it's like not the best example. But the whole idea is that I have this like drum brain right here, and then I'm able to pull all these different uh, samples from that one drum brain. So the drum brain is actually muted, and then so for example, like I have sample kick, and if you go to the the I/O over here, you'll notice that um, it's first of all I select a drum brain, and then I can go here. And in this super long list, I can go pick out the kick or like kicks, like the group of kicks, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, so that's that's kind of how it works. And then that gets like channeled, like pushed around and into like different uh, subgroups, like uh, kick and snare. Um, yeah, I think my computer doesn't like the fact that I'm also streaming, but it's fine. I tested this earlier. It was it was fine, but um, so th then it gets pushed into. Like, let's follow let's follow the path of the kick, for example. So um, I mean, it's so basic. Like it's just a eight oh eight kick, right? <laughs> Big brain routing. Okay. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, drum rack. Uh, real quick, it, the drum tool is something. Uh, yeah, any anybody with Ableton can create this. This is nothing special. I just I just spent the time working on it basically. So I'm I'm big into um, creating like templates, things like that. So because it saves me time basically. Okay, so I got the kick, which is getting sent to the kick and snare bus, which is um, here. Let me show you what I have on the actual kick. Just a, a like kind of subtle EQ, nothing too crazy. And then it goes into the, the kick and snare sub bus, which is just taking out a little bit of that low end so I can control it. Cause the 808 is like particularly like aggressive. Um, so that's just the kick and snare. Uh, how's the audio by the way? Like I, I tested it earlier, it seemed to be fine, but you know, when you're streaming, it's always a little bit different. Um, cool. So. So then that gets routed into, well, the, the kick and snare sub bus gets routed into the beats mix, which this is like now like a sort of a group channel for the drums. 
if that makes sense. And this is where I have, <laughs> this is this has a lot, I guess. It has like some, some compression here on, on this part. And this filter rack is something I built. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it has like a, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, an auto panner. These are like basically tools that I created for myself. So I don't have to keep doing and adding the all this other stuff. Um, it, it's the, the whole idea is like like let me do the work beforehand. So then when when I can, when I want to be creative, I can just do stuff and it, I don't have to worry about like EQs and whatever. Like it's just it's sort of done beforehand. So it's like pre mixed if that makes sense. Um, cool. So this is like the the whole beats mix. This is like the whole drum thing. There's like a little bit of percussion here. I think it's just a snap. Oh, and then there's the the C uh, the Roland C78, which is like an old school drum machine. But this is just samples from that. And th there's like a pretty heavy uh, like tank reverb, which is this Roland right here. Um, but only using the reverb. Again, I'm I'm going kind of deep on this first one only because like the you know for the rest of the, the a lot of a lot of the tracks use the same system so I, I won't need to repeat that uh, delay so I'm not using delay it's just reverb it's um, yeah and I'll, I'll get into my effects in, in a little bit but so I'm also using addictive drums too which I I love this plugin this thing is awesome um, this is the modern jazz bundle <laughs> I don't know. Just to give it that like kind of 60s, I don't know. So this all together, this is what it turns into like. So you get that low end from the 808, that, that like. And then that sort of like, uh, you know, drums, the, the drum sample from Addictive Drums like, um, on top of that, just just like kind of adds a whole another layer to it, basically. Um, let me see if there's not a whole lot of crazy stuff in the drums here. It's I think maybe in the last one I added some like some like very light ride. Just to, it's so simple. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to it. Okay, moving on to the bass. This part is kind of laughable because it's literally just like I, I sampled my Juno, which you probably can't really see it, but it's this one here. Um, and yeah, this is, it's just, <laughs> that's it. It's just the same thing the whole time. There's in the bridge, it goes up. And, um, so the way that I use effects while, while I'm here is, um, I use return buses for all my effects. So all my effects are kind of the same for every uh, for every track. I'll, I'll give you like a better a better example um, after. Okay, moving on to the guitar. The, this this whole album is really heavy on guitar, so I'll, I'll get into that. Okay. Okay, so there's there's a lot of um, th there's a lot of guitar parts here. I like to record like a million different guitar lines. It's fun. Like I double them, I put them in stereo. So let me just give you an example here. This first line, which is sort of the basis of the song, it's panned left and right, um, and then I think I even added maybe a third one. Yeah. So like three guitars playing the same exact thing. But the idea is it just adds like all the sort of the, the humanity that comes out from like playing guitar, you, it pops out in like different spots and it creates a really interesting like stereo effect. That's the hope at least. Uh, I think I got some, let's see what this is. Just an octave up. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, is this like a specific I see? No, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I actually just got this today. <laughs> but this is a Radiohead um, lyric from OK Computer. I just want to make sure. OK, cool. Audio is good. Uh, um, just real quick. <laughs> uh, I do frequently stare, uh, stack kicks and snares. Yeah, it's always like um, it's always like a custom like for every track I do, I like to like basically compile like a bunch of different options and just mix them all together. So it's never like one specific sound. Um, okay, okay, cool. Um, why did I deactivate some of those drum clips? Um, I don't think any of them are deactivated. Some of them are, or the drum, the drum rack is muted, but that's, that's for another reason. Um, um, cool. Just making sure. Okay. Just more guitar parts. Uh, here's the pre-chorus, I think. It's just like a, like, I don't know. It's kind of, no, no, no. Like, it's just a funny. Like yesterday's clothes, I'm gone. And then some more like, ba like lower end guitar stuff. I guess while I'm at it, um, and this is true for like every other track, so I won't repeat this, but basically I record, and well, I'll go grab it one second. This is, uh, this is my Gibson SG. I, I've had this since I was like 15 years old. I pretty much record everything with this. Um, I just know it really well. It's not like it's not the best guitar in the world or whatever, but like I just know it. And sometimes that's better than quality or whatever. So um, yeah, uh, I've been through a lot with this. <laughs> I don't I don't tour with this anymore. Uh, I, I, it's always stays here in the studio, and I pretty much record everything with it. All right. Um, but just just real quick, I so I record through. Um, yeah, you won't be able to see it on camera, but um, actually, I've done like studio tours like uh, on, like before. So if if you want to check that out, um, yeah, I, I sort of go more in depth into like how I record guitars. But basically, it's a uh, I record into like an amplifier that's plugged into an isolation cab, which is basically just a box with a, a guitar speaker in it and a microphone. The idea is like. I live in an apartment, so like I can't like crank the amp like super <laughs> yeah featuring train. Uh, I, I can't crank it too loud, and um, yeah, so it, it's just nice to get a really clean, quiet signal. So here, while I put this away, I'll just uh, I'll let you listen to this. Uh, the question about um, I don't switch guitars or pickups or anything. It's always the same guitar. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, I guess maybe I, I like like switching to like a different setup, uh, like pickup setup. No, not even that. I, I usually I usually just have it. Um, yeah, pr pretty. Yeah, just pretty like straight in the middle. Yeah. Oh, um, did I miss a question? One second. Oh no, I think I got to it. Never mind. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, also, it's cool that Twitch has like much better latency than like other platforms, which is kind of nice. Um, oh, when, when layering guitar tracks, you copy the track and modify it, you do another take. Oh, always another take. Yeah, yeah, multiple takes. Um, yeah, like uh, that's the whole point is to get like multiple different kind of variations on it. Like, like if you can, if you zoom in on this stuff, 
it's like the timing's off it's not quite like like see like see my timing is like it's pretty off you know but intentionally so you know it, it creates it just creates an interesting sound you know perfection is boring so yeah that's my take on it this song has so much guitars i'm just gonna get, get through some of this but um Oh, how long have I been playing guitar? Oh, wait, sorry, I missed one. Do you ever do uh, in, uh, direct input? No, not really. I prefer an amp. Yeah. Even though it's clean guitar, I do prefer an amp. I mean, the, the, there's plenty of good plugins that you can use for that. You don't have to have an amp, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, only uh, quantize 100%. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, would you say learning helps you create music? Well, the, the way that I think about music is that um, I hear it in my head and whatever whatever's the fastest easiest best way to get it into a recorded medium or out in the world in the physical world that's what i'll use so um like for me it's guitar because I, i'm so used to it that i kind of hear the melodies in my head and i can quickly get to it um but if that's if you're faster with a computer if you're faster with a keyboard or whatever um do that i i i'm not a, i'm not a great keyboard player um i program a lot of stuff just because i don't really want to physically play it i just I, I can hear it so like i'm gonna i'm gonna program it you know um here let me show you some more the g chorus guitars there's like so many little details that later uh, let me just pull out this detail because this is cool. I added a <laughs> yeah a boss chorus ensemble basically a chorus pedal just like a dreamy like <laughs> and by the way I don't remember how to play any of this this is like all done at the when I recorded it and then I forget it you know so when I when I need to perform live I need to like relearn everything um, you find it uh, a challenge at all with this album it seems kind of more muted than previous projects just tone wise to keep the songs engaging sonically not too dry you know i don't think about that too much i just kind of go with my gut it, it's like so much of this is is not intentional you're just kind of improvising and, and doing what feels right and then at the end something like like a theme or uh like a, a tone like you said kind of emerges from that it's it's less of a it's not so much me being like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta have muted guitars here, or like, it's just, I, I don't think about it that way. I just don't think about it really. I, I try to use my intuition. Um, that, that's how it works for me. I, I don't mean to like some people plan everything. I don't know. And, and thank you, <laughs> thank you, appreciate that. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna jump around to some other guitar parts because. Oh, oh yeah, this this guitar part here. This is stuff that gets completely lost in the, the full track, but... It's kind of well. Maybe here's there's something new. Oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, have you always heard music in your head, or is that a learnable thing to practice? It seems like only every now and then, and then life's in the recording. Um, I mean, maybe maybe it's learned. Maybe it's like sort of. Uh, I'd say it comes naturally, but it like it's something that maybe you work on, you know, over time. I, yeah, I, I like it. Maybe I'm just taking it for granted. I don't know. But like, I only know my own experience, so I, I can't say for sure. It's such a personal thing, you know, uh, everybody writes music differently. 
um, okay, uh, okay, McKinnon's, wait, did I get everything? Oh, a VHS, uh, I'm releasing volume two samples. Um, oh, wait, do you mean for, for which, uh, because I've named a couple things like volume one, so I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Well, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll try to reply. Um, okay, Kim McKins, I, I see that you like to use Ableton Session View. Kind of advantage. So I I don't use, well, aside from like performing live, I don't use the grid view, you know, the in Ableton. I don't, I don't find it that useful for that. I, I like the linear view of just like looping something, playing it, recording it, and then moving on and building an arrangement that way. That just always felt right to me. And oh yeah, I guess I, I do have a sample pack. Oh, maybe you're talking about the splice pack. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm working on right now, right now. But, um, but I, I, I still need to finish it. But that should be out pretty soon. They actually, <laughs> I was, I, I'm actually late on it, so that's why I'm kind of laughing because it's like I should have done it. But the, you know, with an album coming out, it's like pretty hectic. Um, beat one. No, I didn't go over passion. I'm doing sequentially. I'm really only on the first track, but, um, again, I'm kind of spending a little more time on this one because some of the information is redundant. So, um, yeah. Okay. So a spice bag. That's what you're talking about. Um, okay. I'm going to, let me jump into some synths. Okay. So this is the Korg MS 10, which is right here. Maybe this will come through. synth it's great um it's like from 78 something like that and uh not to be confused with the ms20 which has two oscillators this has one I, I prefer its simplicity it's like just easier um it's more to the point and it cuts through it has a very specific sound i mean it, once you hear that you'll hear it everywhere in my music i, I use it constantly <laughs> This is a pretty subtle layer. It's just to reinforce the guitar line. And that's that. There's not really a whole lot to it. Um, it's actually kind of funny how little synths are in this because it's mostly a guitar-based song. Um, okay, now getting into the sampler section. And you'll notice that I have all of these organized by groups and types. This is uh, this is something I, I do on every track. It's a template that I work off of. Um, uh, okay, so the the boss chorus pedal is the the what's it called? Here, I'll just uh, chorus ensemble. The boss chorus ensemble. You can get the the UAD effect, or you can get the actual thing. But the, I think it's actually pretty rare to get the the original pedal. But um, okay, let me get into some. Yeah. Yeah. Th thanks for answering some of those questions, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for being here. We're I think we're we're uh, doing pretty good. Uh, so this is just the uh, same piano that I mentioned earlier, Alicia's Keys. I, you'll you'll notice that I use this on everything. Um, it's just it's just kind of reinforcing the low ends. Here it is in the chorus. <laughs> it's like so simple. Um, okay, and then I think, let me see, I have these chords in here. Oh, okay, Mellotrons. Okay, Mellotron flutes. <laughs> it's kind of a janky sounding flute, but it's it has like a, an aesthetic to it that I like. The piano on top. These are actually Mellotron guitars. So here's the guitar. Or they're not actual guitars, but sample guitar. It has like a vintagey sound, right? Yeah, yeah, Strawberry Fields. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, the, uh, the flutes especially. I mean, that's straight from the Beatles, right? It's just in the, in the background. Like, it's pretty mellow. Like, it's not... OK, 
okay, then I have a bunch of stuff doing, like playing the melody, that same piano line, or. Here, let me show you some, now with a marimba. <laughs> it's so subtle, but. And I have some offbeat, like. is some uh, <laughs> boys choir yeah <laughs> um, okay yeah going into the string section again these are sample libraries uh, Albion Tundra it's the same thing that I showed you in the last in the last song it's pretty subtle stuff I think maybe the more prominent one is the East West. Uh, it's called Middle Eastern Strings. It's in the raw library, I think. <laughs> oh, it's so subtle. You could barely hear it. Like, Okay, now vocals. Um, so uh, Natalie or Luna Shadows, she she's awesome. And she actually, she's a very good like vocal producer. So um, she actually did a lot of the like, uh, editing and like the sort of grunt work that usually goes that goes into like uh, vocal editing and, and that I appreciate that because now then I don't have to do it um, and you know vocalists tend to be pretty specific about it so I'd much rather have her do that and um, let's see it's funny I didn't even well I don't think I have much on on the actual vocal tracks anyway because she sent them all compressed and like really nice Overexposed. I know that everyone knows I feel like yesterday's clothes I'm going all the way home I'm alone again Turn on my phone I guess I'll take off my clothes Undress and take down my ghost She has such a good voice, like it's, Impress it's awesome anything goes Oh, we got Bo. Again. So self destructive this is. Hey, let me show you the chorus real quick, because there's a little bit more happening here. Everyone who loves you is leaving. No one cares about you. They don't even see you. They've all got the jewel pies, care about their cool friends. Everyone is sleeping. Time to make your own bed. <laughs> Everyone who loves you is leaving, leaving. Um, here, let me show you the the background vocals. There's actually not a whole lot of vocal parts to this. Um, I mean, she comped them too, so there's that, but. Leaving, you, see you. Just kind of like reinforcing certain lines and then. Just to kind of, you know, bring it all together. Everyone who loves you is leaving, leaving. Leaving, leaving. A little upset. <laughs> uh, Bo decided to play with a, a, cr a crinkly uh, rapper right now. As cats do. Might as well embrace it. Everyone who loves you is leaving. Let me get into the next one and 
or start loading it because it's going to take a second. I might, I probably will have to like restart my computer at one point <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, it's just, it is what it is. Um, these sessions are like, super heavy. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get a lint roller emote. Yeah. Um, uh, v Vigilante. No, this is, this is, uh, yeah. Okay. You guys answered. It's a song called Boomerang off, off my new album called Boy. So check it out. <laughs> And, um, yeah, thanks guys. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of reverb, like I use, um, I use a lot of, here, let me, I feel like when it's loading, I can, I can switch to this camera. Oh, the chat is huge, but whatever. Um, yeah, I, I really like this reverb. Uh, it's basically based on the space echo. I kind of showed it briefly, but um, it's just really nice. It, it, it's a very has like kind of like a vintage quality to it that I really like, and um, I use it on pretty much like everything, like every single track. Um, also, the name is the name is called uh, Boomerang because it's a reference to Instagram, by the way. <laughs> Not because we're trying to promote like Instagram, but because it's like. Uh, I mean, Natalie kind of tells the story a lot better than, than me, but basically it, the idea is that um, she was experiencing like a really beautiful sunset and and it, it, she felt kind of weird that we're distilling these like beautiful moments into like these stupid little like back and forth moments, like as if that's supposed to capture it, you know? So anyway, that's 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 one of the ideas behind it. Um, oh, uh, thank you. Um, I just want to say Mission 3 uh, Hong Kong from the Master Spy soundtrack blows my mind every time. It's my lit. Thank you. I had a lot of fun with that soundtrack. It was great. I, uh, I've, always, I've always been into video games growing up, so it was pretty cool, f like pretty important for me to like work on a video game, and I'm glad I got to do that. Um, so the question, uh, Andre, how, how long does it take you to make one of these songs on average? I mean, it's it's really hard to say. Uh, I want to say, like... I mean, this album took me three years, but it's not like I was working on it continuously or anything like that. It was, it was, uh, like, I'd say like from, it, it's, it's really hard to say because it's like, it's over a very long period of time and I'm not like working on it continuously. Like the actual work work, like for example, like for a remix, I can, I can do those in like maybe, I mean, really like a day, but, um, but I usually spend like three or four days on those. Uh, but but like for this i like to take my time i like listen to it over and over again i like go try different arrangements things like that so like i don't i don't have to do it like this that slow um yeah radiohead reference uh yeah thanks um yeah no i i've been building this studio it's it's i've, I've been here for about five years in this space and uh I have it like pretty dialed in at the moment. I'm actually running out of space. I, I like, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know it. Like I, every time I like there a new synth comes out, I'm like, Oh, I really want that. It's like, I don't know where I'm going to put it. <laughs> I have to like get rid of something else to do it. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the stream will be up later if you want to go, go back and check it out. Of course. Yeah. Um, Cool. Well, so I, I want to. There's it's a long album, so I want to kind of move ahead. And uh, again, I'm not going to dwell on some of the details as much on on these songs unless there's something specific. But um, but yeah. So this is a song called M.I.A. It's featuring this amazing artist called Danny Dwyer. Uh, I got linked up with him through I think my label. They uh, they suggested him, and I was like blown away. Like he has a really interesting voice, like a really raspy kind of thing, and he just kind of nailed it. Like. Um, but uh, kind of a fun fact about this one, I uh, this chord progression I actually wrote when like I remember write, writing it when I was like 13 years old, so it's not like uh, I mean it's a pretty simple thing. It's not that exciting of a, of a thing like uh, of a chord progression, but it has sort of sentimental value and and the whole album is about my childhood, so it made sense to kind of incorporate that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I do want to mention like. This is the, since the topic of my, of my studio is is up. Um, 
like I, I uh, my typical streams are more performative and I'm like, I'm doing kind of like improv type of, not DJing, but like sample manipulation, things like that. So um, this is, this is a kind of a special thing because I'm like going through the record and, and, and all of that. So it's a bit more nerdy studio stuff, but usually I, I'm doing more, more, you know, basic performance. So, okay. Before the questions come in, I, I'm going to, Again, same thing like last time. I'm going to play the whole thing, and then I'll come back and um, you know talk through it, answer some questions and stuff. Thank you all for being here, by the way. I appreciate it. I need I need the intro drums, of course. Cool. Um, so that's uh, that's MIA featuring Danny Dwyer. Oh, what's up, Des? How's it going? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> just real quick uh, before I get into this, any any advice for intro hardware? Since I recommended that microbrew, um, yeah, the microbrew is great. I I think that's the one I have over there. Um, it's great. I would say actually some of the Roland boxes, they're not they're not like analog, but pff, it sounds pretty pretty close. Um, a meaty snare, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get into the, the the stuff specifically. Okay, how do you make these intersections sound so full, even though there's barely anything going on? I don't know, man. It's just like <laughs> it's like an intuitive thing. Um, I mean, I think maybe like a lot of trial and error, perhaps. You know, it's sort of like you just listening to it over and over again. You kind of feel like, oh, okay, well that that's too much. Like it just feels like too much. Like why continuously add? You know. Um, there's something to simplicity that um, it's hard to, it's a learned skill. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's like an intuitive thing. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, yeah, Sunday afternoon vibe. Yeah, I get that for sure. Um, yeah, thanks, Vigilante. Appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Okay, so um, before I, let, let me just get into a couple, uh, a couple like, a couple parts of these songs. Again, I'm not going to kind of go in, in depth. This one, the drums are mostly uh, addictive drums too, actually. So, yeah, there's like just like a like a compressor on it, and 
Also, RC20, I love this plugin. This thing is amazing. Like, if you come out of this knowing, like, wanting to buy any plugin, then, uh, <laughs> Like this is this is a good one. Um, it's actually by the same company as Addictive Drums too. And by the way, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I just love this thing so much. Uh, but I use it for distortion, um, and I just love it. Like it just adds some grit to like punchiness to everything. Like here. It's like no, barely any hi hats, you know. I mean, it is all excellent. Really. I guess maybe one thing I'll mention about programming drums, like you'll notice these are all off the grid, like the hi-hats especially, they're super loose. Like this is not, that is not on beat. I'm missing that, you know, like pretty heavily, but that's all, that's all intentional because it, it adds like sort of a humanity to it, you know. And I mean, I think that's like, like this is pretty much it. It's actually kind of, it's funny because a lot of people like reference my drums and I'm like, dude, I'm barely doing anything. Like sometimes about what you don't do, you know? Oh, right. That's, that's the end of the song. Right. Uh, okay. Moving through the bass. This is also, okay. So the bass only comes in on the second chord or second verse really. So it's pretty mellow. You now I'm not cool. The fuck did I do? I don't want anyone if it ain't you. I speak to my who, but I ain't a fool. I don't want anyone if it ain't. All right, I was gonna show you the bass, and then I just play the whole thing. <laughs> so there's a little bit of EQ here. A little bit of compression. I think this one also has the RC20. I think pretty much everything has the RC20. No, I didn't even use it here. Never mind. I probably should have, but whatever. Too late now. <laughs> um, so that's the bass. Super simple. Nothing that interesting going on. So. Um, yeah, I basically like, uh, okay, the guitar is, I basically like recorded it twice and then just looped it the whole thing. Like, again, using that technique that I mentioned, like recording two stereo, like this is left side. This is right side. Notice how one's uh, dry and the other one is wet. So you gotta have the solo, right? Um, I'll show you that part. Actually, I'll show you now. I'll show you the actual full solo because that's more fun. Um, then let's see what, what I got here. Like 90s all rock stuff. <laughs> um, do, I, do I stem out the MIDI uh, for further process? No. I just like, it's straight out. It's like <laughs> stereo <laughs> out of Addictive Drums too. I, I know that there's like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm compressing it and I'm like sort of fine tuning it within the program. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't remember what I did here, but uh, like you can go in here and like edit some of these levels. Like I think I lowered the hi-hat maybe, um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, there's guitar accents and separate track added after. No, I think that's just me playing playing that way so it's like I'm adding some stuff like this and then like there's this guitar line here that comes in whoops there's a kind of this pre-chorus thing here like yeah 
Okay, cool. Um, let me show you the solo parks. I'm actually pretty stoked about that. <laughs> um, so this is like a kind of a composite of a bunch of different parts. Um, Cause I'm kind of lazy and I'll just record like a little bit, <laughs> record the rest instead of doing it all in one take. And that's that, that's the guitar solo. But let me show you with the chords so it makes a little more sense. too behind on the comments here uh, do you organize as you work and go yeah yeah pretty much um yeah I, I organize as I go pretty much uh, yeah yeah so it's Ableton uh, what mic do I use to record uh, this is actually funny enough like again people are always trying to sell you super expensive mics this is a hundred dollar microphone it's the SM58 it's like what everybody uses so um, don't don't believe what people tell you <laughs> that you're supposed to buy super expensive equipment. You don't need it. In fact, the the amp that I use on pretty much the whole album is um, yeah I think it's uh, two hundred dollars. So it's the Vox AC4. Um, you can get great sounds from from cheap gear. The SM58. Um, cool. Let me uh, let me let me jump into. Oh yeah, so there's like a little there's a little solo here that I like. And then it's it's doubled. Maybe I'll just go to the trumpets right now. So I uh, I hired uh, I don't play trumpet, so I hired a friend of mine to record this part. I basically gave him the guitar part. I was like, hey, can you play this on trumpet? And he's like, yeah. And then he sent it back to me, and that's it. Um, and this is what came out. That. Let me show you just in context what happens there. Now my telephone's ringing, waiting for an SMS saying your name. I don't want anyone if it ain't you. Yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, man, that's like, okay, there's a little bit of keys. There's no sense in this song. Nothing. Um, oh, there, there's a, a lot of Mellotron here, which is okay. So it's it's a mix of uh, boys choir, which I love that sound. It's actually because the album's called Boy. I thought it'd be really funny to use boys choirs like. And then the flutes, of course. <laughs> yeah, boys choir. Um, okay, how do you how do you think about the compression settings for your guitar or trumpet in those scenarios? Um, compression on guitars. Uh, I so I compress in, in maybe actually there's no compression on guitars. I'm like looking through this now. <laughs> Usually I do, but I didn't I didn't feel like it needed it. You know, it just it sounded full. Like I don't need to like suck the dynamics out of everything. So. Yeah, usually I do though. That's this is I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm like, oh wow, okay, I'm being a little lazy now. Um, <laughs> but I, I would say normally what I do uh, here. Let, let me maybe give an example of what I would normally do. Um, so let's take uh, let's take this. Okay. So I would go here to the compressor, turn it to this view, like don't bother with this, and then just go here, 
So you see it like, you see it kind of affecting it a little bit. Nudge it back a little bit, just so it's a subtle thing. And take your dry wet and go like that. I don't even think about it. That's all, that's all I do. <laughs> Pro tip for you. <laughs> Save a lot of time worrying about compression. Um, <laughs> uh, t t but to be fair, there, there actually is a lot of like sort of subtle compression. Um, I'm using like an SSL G bus here. Again, it's a, just a lot of subtle compression. Um, the Oxford inflator, just a little bit, 30%, nothing too crazy. And then going into a virtual mix bus, which I love this plugin, Slate Audio or Slate Digital, whatever. It's great. Um, yeah, yeah, it's parallel compression. The, yeah, basically. Um, it's, it's by doing like a lot of subtle uh, parallel compression, you can actually get like a pretty dynamic sound that still sounds pretty full. That That's my take on it. Um, okay, do you, do you ever use the plugins like Waves, Vocal Rider, Bass Rider to automate volume? No, not really. Uh, I, I, I know people did too. Maybe that's a good way to do it. I don't know. I, I, I usually, I try to get like a good performance that's like, you can see it in the waveform if it's like kind of lined up, you know, or if it's like fitting within the same ranges. Okay, let me get to the vocals. Cause I think I did a, I did more in this. Uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> yeah, there's a lot happening here. You have your own intentions, and I don't like so, of course, a de -esser. That's necessary. Uh, in the last song, I didn't do a whole lot of vocal production because she already did it, and she did it really well, so I didn't need to do any of this. But basically, yeah, a de is pretty necessary just because you get this, like, really obnoxious sounds, like, you cut them out. For, for me, I'll, like, solo the frequency and try to find it and then just pull it out. In this case, minus 30. So it's kind of extreme, but like he has a pretty raspy voice, so. You have your own intention. And then after that, then I'll add distortion because distortion can really reinforce the sound, basically. Um, so. You have your own intention. Again, it's it's like, it's heavy distortion, but it's mixed the way all the way down. So let me show you full on. You have your own intention. And I, I mean, that even sounds pretty good on its own, but like I wanted it a little more subtle, so it's like back to 30. You have your own intent. I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. And now we're not cool. The fuck did I do? I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. There's also a little like tank reverb, which is the the, the RE201, which I, I, I mentioned in the last song. But I ain't a fool. I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. And you say we're through every week or two. I don't want anyone if it ain't. Okay, let me see what else he did here. He, he, I, he like sent me like a whole lot of options and stuff, and it was, which I appreciate because it's a lot to play with or play around with. I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. It's like out of tune, but it's like it sounds cool though. Like. I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. And we try. I don't want anyone if it ain't yo. See what I mean about the compression here? Like, I don't want anyone. Subtle parallel compression, that's it. Um, I will say the vocal mix has, has some stuff here too. There's an, a secondary layer of, of um, DSing, which happens on the, on the group track level. Um, yeah, I don't know. I felt like it was important. So, okay, there's that, and then, wait, where was it? Okay, and then uh, another EQ, filter rack, same thing. Um, okay, this plugin, uh, EOSIS Air EQ, I just call it Air EQ, um, just for a subtle lift here on the air, because it, no, I, don't want anyone if it ain't. I want it to cut above everything else, basically. So again, like um, G bus compressor, Oxford inflator, same thing on pretty much everything. Like virtual mix bus. This basically emulates like a mixing board. I used to use uh, like out or a lot of like you know, summing mixers and stuff like that, and that was like a huge hassle. I mean, it was it sounded good, but it was like too much work. So this sort of replaces that. Um, let's see what else do we got here. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to add that part with like some delay just to kind of 
<laughs> you know, since I'm here, maybe I'll show you the effects that I use. And this is this is going to be true for actually like every track. So um, let me loop a, one section that's obvious. It's not like, it's not like before. If it ain't. Yeah. If it ain't, if it ain't. Nah, that's a bad one. Let me try something easier. I mine without. Cool, I'll do that. In my mind. Okay, so if you notice over here, that's yeah, that's still in frame. Uh, sometimes I need to remember that um, the screen is blocking some of this. Um, oh, did I use Melodyne? I don't know. I didn't. Usually I would. Um, I'll, I'll use Melodyne or Autotune from time to time if it needs it, but I, lo I loved his kind of natural, like, cadence. Like, it just felt right, you know? Um, okay, so here, usually I have, like, a, um, like, well, I had the RE201 -E on this, but I'm going to turn that off, so this is just dry. In my mind. Okay, so then this is, this is the EMT 140. In my mind, in my mind, in my mind. In my mind. And this is the EMT 140. This is what it looks like. It's plate reverb. Um, I use B. It doesn't matter. It's one of one of those. Um, so I just have it uh, on a return. It's always set to 100% wet, and um, it's yeah. It's just always. I I basically filter every or I send everything through those uh, effects. So I'm not like adding effects to individual tracks. I'm actually just having it like on, on a return bus, which is kind of an old school way to do it. But like, it honestly sounds better than throwing it on every track. Um, this is actually one of my favorites, a Lexicon 224. Whoops. Super long, like, in my mind. like that decay is insane. Um, this is what it, it's vocal plate, and then I raise the mid range like super high. In my mind. Okay, let me just turn that off. Okay, this this is actually what I normally use. In my mind. Which is the RE two hundred one. It just gives everything like a vintage, nice feel. And um, I used to have one of these, but yeah, not anymore. And then this is the Echo Boy. In my mind. Just a delay, like set to, I'll, I'll, I'll mess around with these settings depending on the song. Um, and then the EP34, which is my favorite delay. Whoops. Actually. In my In mind. My yeah, I mean, you'll hear this on like all of my tracks basically, because I, I use this plugin way too much. In my, In my mind. mind. Okay, that's that. Um, cool. Okay, so that's vocals. Uh, I'm gonna, cause I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna move on to passion, which was somebody brought that up earlier. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely recommend um, I would definitely recommend uh, um, Echo Boy for sure. I, I really like it. I think it's great. Um, so uh, yeah, passion up next. Okay, what's all that processing you have after the delays, reverbs? I can show you on, on when this one opens. It's gonna take a second. Uh, it's basically like it's actually similar to what I have on every group track. So it's like the, um, it's like the SSL bus compressor, a side chain set to the kick and snare, and then, um, I think I have the, oh, what's that other one? The the same like Slate Digital, uh, Virtual Console Collection, whatever. So it's the same idea. It's there's nothing really that unique about it. It's like every track has the same thing. Um. Yeah, Echo Boy's great. Um, oh, so how how are you able to stream uh, uh, ASIO? I don't even know how to say that. Uh, so right now I'm I'm not streaming from this computer. I I do have OBS. That it, OBS is sending this signal like over the network to another computer over here that's actually doing the streaming. 
So yeah, that, that would be a lot to kind of throw at this computer right now. Cause these, I mean, depending on the session, some of them are running, you know, 30, 40% CPU. If you throw that, like a thing on top of that, it's too much. I mean, I do have a graphics card in here that's like, could probably handle it, but I don't know. Um, how do you approach organizing lots of songs into a single album? Uh, the, I mean, that's the hardest part, right? Like I've, uh, it's, it's kind of like the, the way that I write is all, I will write like 50 or 60 demos and then send them out to different vocalists, get maybe 40 back, like 40 ideas. And from there, uh, you know, some clear winners will start to appear and this th theme kind of emerges from it. So yeah, it, uh, that's, that's basically how I mean, it, it took me to answer your, your question. Like it took me about three years, the whole process. Um, I mean, a lot of trial and error and stuff like that. wasn't like, it wasn't like continuous, like I mentioned before, but, uh, yeah. Um, but like, as far as like finding an album, like there's, there's plenty of songs that actually came out of that, that I really like, but didn't fit the vibe of the record. So it was like really important to me to find something that was cohesive that made sense that was like that had like a good progression and you know for <laughs> everybody in the industry is like oh albums are dead albums are dead it's like well <laughs> I, I disagree uh yeah i i think albums are very much alive and uh and the only people that uh say that are they just say that because they don't care about it but there's a lot of people that do care about albums and uh I think maybe the success of, that this one is already having is maybe, um, you know, showing that because I put a lot of effort into the album. It wasn't just about individual songs, you know. Um, can you show us what a demo looks like? I'm sorry, I understand. Um, yeah, maybe. OK, maybe after. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like how I can pull that up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's like. Like I, I like to actually have my demos like super polished uh, because then people are more eager to work on it because they can see where it's going to go, you know? Um, but th then again, like, I don't know, that's sort of my situation. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to like sort of extrapolate that and apply that to everybody. Um, yeah, let me think, let me get back to you on that. I got to think about like how I can show that to you on this setup, but just because I have like a crazy like routing whole system. <laughs> um, and no, I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't sing a top line or anything like that. I just, I let them do that. Okay. So this is passion featuring Lewis, the child. Um, I am going, same thing. I'm going to mute it, mute my mic and play the whole song and I'll be back in a second. Just pieces of 
Cool. That's that. Um, I'm like really loving this like little remote for uh, for Streamlabs. It's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Glad you, glad you like that one. Um, okay, I, I got to move through these a little bit quicker. Well, I, I sort of explained I think a lot of the intricacies. So um, here I'll just kind of show you some of the stems. Again, addictive drums too. Um, uh, yeah, pretty. Here here's the drums. Pretty simple. <laughs> I think it kind of stays the same the whole time, and then like. Yeah, it was like a clap. So, this is something I recorded forever ago, it's just like a clap library. It's just me clapping, like that's it. Um, I, I am using battery. This is, um, I do use this from time to time. Um, I use this only because I want this one sample. It's, it's this one right here. Like I load the entire plugin. I didn't use anything else except this. I just love how it sounds. I've tried pulling out the sample, but it doesn't sound the same. So I just use this plugin for, for that one thing. It's kind of silly, but uh, when, when you find something you like, you kind of stick with it, you know. You can even barely hear it. Anyway, that's that. There's really not a whole lot, like... Again, this is Addicted Drums 2. Um, I'm using a Vintage Dry Disco Dirt. <laughs> that was at least the starting, like, preset that I sort of nudged and changed, but yeah. That's 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 it. Um, pretty simple stuff. Um, okay, baseline. A lot of the bass is actually coming from electric keys, not from the bass. So it's just a Juno or a Juno, yeah. It says contact, but that was just because I, I copied the MIDI. Uh, th thanks for the sub, by the way. Appreciate that. Um, does uh oh wow we're at 34 sweet um yeah i, I kind of missed some of those subs so <laughs> thanks guys uh does it take the drums to help with drum fills uh no no i still have to program everything manually i prefer it that way um yeah i don't know okay same thing there's not a whole lot there's really not a lot of bass in, on this album it's like mostly guitars so here's here's some guitar parts That's it. So it's funny because I remember writing this thinking that it would work for Loose the Child because like they're really good at this like noodly like that not, not, that this this part here like We got some we got some good viewers today. I appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, there is this guitar solo section. Actually, do you know what what's funny is I may have. Um, um, because, so we, we, we had a bit of back and forth, so I'm, I, I don't think I actually have like the full, the final version of this <laughs> on here. So I, I'm missing a guitar solo in this one, but whatever, you, it's, it's, it's basically the same thing. Um, that's actually kind of funny. Okay, going back, this, okay, finally some synths. Okay, something. 
Okay, this is, uh, I took Operator, actually, the basic, like, stock, like, Ableton uh, synth, and just, like, threw a ton of effects on it, so. It has this, like, super long, th here, let me show you to you without effects, so you can hear it. That's it, and then you add effects. Right, let's see what else we got here. It's kind of mimicking the the guitar, really. It's just to it's just to kind of reinforce it, basically. Operator. <laughs> okay, here's something more interesting. Um, there's like an arpeggiator that I. Oh, and then I had a vocal sampler here, so I'm off beat. As far as synth synths go, that's like kind of it for that part. Um, just a lot of stuff doubling the guitars, basically. Oh, I do have this um, again, the Korg MS MS10 here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not usually standing for the streams, but. Because I, I, move, I move around a lot when I record, so. Um, okay, so I recorded that, that synth part, and then I was like, I asked the trumpet player, Ariel. He, he goes by Ariel Trumpet, so shout out to Ariel. Um, check him out on Instagram. But he, a fantastic jazz player, but I actually met him when I met Louis the Child, and we recorded a bunch of stuff. And uh, so I, I basically asked him to you know record some trumpets for it oh he recorded a rec he, he had, did a recorder too let me show you so this is a trumpet and you can hear like the breath and stuff it's so nice okay but he he's also like a very good recorder player which is like the thing you learn in like middle school and it's like we threw that in there because i think it's hilarious <laughs> f's in the chat for uh for some recorder <laughs> I love that. <laughs> when he sent that to me, I just could not stop laughing. It's like so funny. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, there's a question about, um, is it, so this is final mix. Um, well, technically not this one because I did an edit, but, um, but yeah, basically final mix, but I have somebody else master it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I have a lot of electric keys here. And then the chords come in. Yeah, it's funny. This is actually an old arrangement of the song. I mean, it's essentially the final mix, but um, yeah, because we, we changed a couple like little, nudged some stuff around. Um, 
like out of that first vocal part. So the song, yeah, I guess maybe I'll never get a chance to show you guys. So I'll just, I'll play. I guess I already played it, but um, yeah, I didn't think about that. It's kind of missing that first vocal hook. Yeah, so we recorded this in LA um, at their studio, and or the studio that they were renting at the time. Um, yeah, it was like I don't know, probably like two in the morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I think we did. We used a oh, what's it called? A U forty seven. So like kind of a pricey, nice mic, which is kind of fun. It's like what Frank Sinatra used to use. Passion. Let the world wash over me, expression. Keep me up, can't go to sleep. So like a lot of vocal parts here. Like they're all they have some gates on them. Um Yeah, like RC twenty. A lot of distortion, stuff like that. It's actually it's very similar to the other tracks, so I'm not um yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not gonna dwell on it too much because it's kind of repetitive, but um Intention. Like a lot of group, tr like vo yelling tracks, or yeah, Let the world wash over me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's Robbie. Yeah, Let the world wash over me. Expression. Keep me up, can't go to sleep. Fit or happier, more productive. Intention. Radiohead lyric. Make a light that shines forever. Make a light that shines forever. Um, cool. I, I do. I want to show you just this one quick little loop here. Well, it's it's it's. Uh, it was actually I think it was Robbie at the end. He was like, "Oh, let it loop to like so he could sing it again." But I like that part, so I was like, "Let it loop." <laughs> so like, it it's just a subtle thing. Like, um, cool. And then there's some other stuff. Just reinforcing passion. Passion. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna move to sweater. I mean, I figured I would take a while, but um, <laughs> can't take too long. Uh, so how, how do I organize my plugins? Um, I'm actually kind of bad about that. I just like, I, I use like the search function. Oh, hey, Bo. You want to say hi? No, he does not. Hey, buddy. Oh, okay. All right. Now I'm covered. <laughs> yes why human um so to answer your question about plugin organization i i don't i just search for it like i i kind of know what i want sometimes i i do my like i have like my favorites organized where i like just know what to grab but like i said for the most part a lot of the mixing that kind of stuff i just it's pre-mixed like i work on a template basically um Yeah, like, why am I here? <laughs> Ugh, so much for... You can't see him, but he's uh, he's at my legs, just constantly begging. Um, is this going on YouTube? Uh, no, no, this is like a Twitch thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, sick. We got, uh, yeah, we got a lot of, a lot of viewers. That's awesome. Shout out. Hope you all are doing good. As my computer is still loading the next song. Um, 
yeah, at one point I might have to like restart my computer. Oh wait, no, it's working. Never mind. Um, because if I open up too many sessions, it <laughs> it can like start to mess up. Oh, can I have a shout out? Yeah, sure, sure. G gaming four four two. Oh, the cats are fighting. Bobo, don't be a dick. <laughs> He's like, I mean, I know most cats can can be can be jerks, but like he's uh yeah he's uh <laughs> he's especially obnoxious actually. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, see you, Roger. Yeah, n no uh, no whistling today, but uh <laughs> yeah, shout out to the Discord crew. Yeah, I think the, the Steves are here. So yeah. Oh, emotional hygiene. Thank you. I'm glad you like the Tokyo Police Cup remix. Like that's a, that's an old school one. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've. I think I did that in 2007, something like that. Um, yeah, the SAC is here, the Steve Artist Collective. By the way, that's sort of like a, a running joke with our Patreon crew, um, because apparently there's just a lot of Steves that like REC, <laughs> so. So we started calling it the Steve Artist Collective. Um, well, we'll see if this loads. Maybe. I might have to restart. But we made it through like four songs. So that's pretty good. Yeah, at least two Derek's. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Van, it's, it's, it's a Patreon thing. I actually, I need to set it up for like Twitch subs as well. But yeah, Steve's amazing call. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, after sweater, I think I'm gonna reboot just real quick. But yeah, this stuff is like super heavy. Like so, everyone like if I open up too many sessions, I just need to reboot, and that's like Windows problems. I'm 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 sort I'm coming from Mac, and like yeah, so I uh, I got in like I got this PC. I'm I'm actually pretty happy with it, except that Windows is kind of like weird. But um. I was on Mac forever. I was on the Mac Pro, but then they announced a new one. I'm like, dude, I'm. There's no way I was running 40k on a on a on a glorified, you know, cheese grater. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm. Uh, so I, I bought like a Ryzen system. I'm pretty stoked on it, except that like I don't love Windows, but maybe I'll because it's Ryzen. I can't do Hackintosh, well easily. So I don't know. Um, it, I think it is the template. Because it, it, it ran perfectly on Mac, but with Windows, it's ha it has a hard time, I guess. But whatever, I, I've worked around it, and it'll be fine. <laughs> but th these are also, like, really heavy sessions. I mean, these are, like, final sessions, so, like, it's kind of to be expected. I mean, just, just for context, like, I'm using, fi well, in this one, 56% of, of all my DSP processing, which I have a lot. I have way too much. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so just going to continue going through the record. Um, I'm going to play the full song, and then we'll go through it. So, cool. Enjoy. It's called Sweater. It's fe featuring Maddie J.
Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd switch up the camera a little bit um, to just grooming time over here. Um, okay, for those of you that are just joining, since we uh, have a substantial more viewers, I'm going through my new record. It's called Boy. Here, let me show you. I'm just showing this again because like, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Beautiful, translucent vinyl. I'm so stoked about it. This is the cover, double LP. Um, but basically, I'm going through it and you know talking about each song and, and showing how it was made, different parts, whatever. All right. Okay, uh, I, I went through some of the more technical stuff on the first one, so I'm, I'm gonna kind of go through more like stems and show you different parts. So this one, yeah, okay, C78, uh, a lot of that. Uh, thank you. Glad you like it. <laughs> it's kind of a boring, like, uh, the drums on their own are just like... You notice those those hi-hats are, like, loose. They're, like, a little bit offbeat, but, like, just locks in the groove, you know? Yeah, it's, like, so late. Like, way off the grid. Okay. Let me... It almost feels like it was played by a human, but it's like completely programmed. Okay, finally I get to show you like a cool bass line, because Maddie, uh, Maddie played bass on this and she's a phenomenal bass player. You should go check her out, by the way. Maddie J. Um, yeah, okay, so she just sent me this like sick bass part for it. Like, here. <laughs> On its own, it kind of. Let me show you with the drums so you can kind of feel the groove a little bit. Yeah, she streams on Twitch too, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's that. And then I added some like synth bass. Just to kind of make it a little bit fatter basically. Uh, 
Uh, let me see. Do I have a compressor? Yes. Distortion. A, a little bit of compressor. I'm using a Fairchild. Okay. I love this plugin. Uh, made by UAD. Okay, cool. That's the bass. It's funny listening to this stuff on its own because it's like, yeah, you, when you remove it from context, it sounds kind of funny, but. Okay, a lot of guitars here, but here, let me show you. But then you throw the bass on it. I'll get to the, the, the master chain in a second. Show this bigger section here it's like so okay so i'll do i'll do just the the the, bleh, the drums the bass and guitar detail stuff I mean there's so many different guitar parts I mean all of this all of this is like it kind of adds up to a lot um what's up Chuck <laughs> so there's a good amount of synths in this one as well let me pull that up uh, of course, that intro, like, just vintage -y, you know, goodness, basically. Oh, thanks for the sub. Appreciate that. Yeah, that, that it, like, Matt is an amazing bass player. I mean, she's, like, you know, Berkeley School of Music, you know, like, amazing. Um, She actually added that synth part. It's really tasteful, it's really nice. Um, here. And then in that one bigger section, I added a bunch of stuff as well. show you uh, again just that one section kind of with everything Core game ascent again. This I love this thing. Okay, just real quick. Uh, actually, maybe I should do that. Protect your ears, guys. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I love it. 
um, Uh, do you ever automate the effects? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, but since they're all in returns, I just automate the the return send basically. Um, here's here's the uh, Corium S10. It's like that West Coast sine wave vibe, basically. It's the Korg MS-10. some basic key stuff. Oh, this this got really buried in the mix. It's pretty low. It was actually an original idea that I had and it, it didn't really fit in the final, so I just kind of kept it in there a little bit. Okay, vocals. Let's see. Uh, pretty simple stuff, actually. It's been a while and someone else's jokes have made me smile a little off color but that's all part of your style you look so good in that sweater boy in your double cuff jeans no you're not like the other guys Ooh. I'm just sipping on my white wine But when I lean in you smell like vodka and crystal light <laughs> I love that lyric, it's great um, Oh, and the, oh, cause she added this, this really interesting vocal pad here Yeah some oohs and ahs. <laughs> Actually, let me back up here. that let me um I wanna know what makes you sad what's on your mind I can't put my finger on you but that's what I like Cool. Um, so I'm going to, before I get into the next one, I'm actually, I'm going to actually just restart my computer because I have to. <laughs> so uh, it'll be a couple minutes, but I'll, I'll take some questions in the meantime. <laughs> Stream vibe levels, yeah. I 
Actually, I wish I could find some background music to put on, but. Yeah, the delay never ends, basically. It's just always going. Okay, what is the software set up to get Ableton to play audio to stream? So, um, everything that is happening here, here actually, let me, one second. There we go. Um, I have a separate computer for streaming. So it's, yeah, so I don't have to, the, this computer can be focused on just music and then it's just sending like an audio out basically. Um, and so I have a separate computer basically. But I'm, I'm using uh, Streamlabs. <laughs> okay, uh, when you send something to a vocalist, is the track fully mixed? No, 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 it's pretty far from it. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I try to send like a pretty developed demo, but, um, but yeah, not like that. Cause there's still going to be like a lot of back and forth, you know, from there. Um, uh, do you have an analog synth to play your favorite while waiting for the computer to reboot? Um, well, the thing is that all the audio needs to go through this computer, so I could turn it on, but it won't, it won't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. I, I forgot that I put it like right there. It's like, yeah, anybody with cats can understand. Um. <laughs> Do you mind explaining who you are? <laughs> like, I mean, I guess that's fair since uh, I, I'm. I think I'm on the front page right now, so people are just like showing up, like, like who's this dude? Um, so, um, well, I guess I don't even have it there, but uh, I, I, I've been making music for since really my whole life, but um, professionally since 2007. I go by RAC. I do a lot of remixing. I do, uh, I mean, I've done a lot of stuff. Uh, I used to work on HBO's Entourage. I did, um, I put out my own records and that's sort of the focus that I do now. And that's actually what we're going through right now is like my own stuff. Um, I did a ballet last year. I really just tried to do things that are interesting to me. And, um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just like, I'm always trying to stress myself as a musician and just become better at what I do. So however I get there, that's, uh, you know, I, I get bored easily. So I like, I'm just trying to like always do something new, if that makes sense. Um, okay, I know, uh, I, I know it's been forever you, but how long did it take you to start making music you enjoy? <laughs> that is a fair question because it is like, it's a tricky thing, like, you know, because you, your, your skill might not reach your taste, basically. Um, I think we've, I've talked about that on a stream before, like, I think Malcolm Gladwell talks about that. Uh, yeah, where, like, you know that it's bad, but, like, really, it's just time. And I, I feel like since I started early, my taste hadn't really developed, so I just thought everything I did was great. And then later on, I realized, like, no, <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I would say, like... It depends on where you're starting. Okay, uh, do you do your own mixing and mastering? I don't do mastering, but I do mixing. Yeah, so I mix this whole record. Yeah, LP1, right here. Uh, at what point um, in, in making music do you feel comfortable releasing tracks? Uh, that's that's a tricky thing. Sometimes a day, sometimes three years. So it's, it's all over the place. Um, here, let me... Uh, get Ableton open again. <laughs> yeah, cat hair. It's, it's a real problem, especially because I insist on wearing all black all the time. Uh, who's an artist you've never gotten to mix that you'd want to? Oh, uh, like for remixing? Uh, probably, um, I mean, Paul Simon. <laughs> but that's like, yeah, that's sort of like, When's that ever gonna happen? I don't know. So I, I often throw that one out. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, you know what? I have like, after I'm, I'm done with it, I've drilled a hole and put rice in there and then patched it and then use it as a shaker. So you can be, you can be, uh, you know, resourceful with it. <laughs> Teach me how to make music. Uh, that's a, you gotta do that yourself, man. <laughs> Okay, uh, love your track with Hilary Duff. Yeah, what a weird thing to be saying. I agree. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was stoked about that. So I, I know her through uh, Matthew Coma, which I, I worked I worked with Matthew a lot. And um, yeah, he, 
you know, we we both are fans of Throw Eye Blind. We want to do this cover. And then she was in the studio one day, and he, he texted me. He was like, hey, is it cool if, like, Hillary jumps on this? I was like, of course. Yeah, like, that'd be sick. So we did the we did the cover, and it turned out to be the first song she had released in, like, five years, which I had no idea. I thought it was just, like, for, you know, we're just doing it for fun, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's Hollywood. <laughs> okay, let, let me just, I'll get back to you guys in a second. I just got to. Um, okay, where was I? I think next to you. Is that, I need to remember like what number it is. I think it's 31. Yes, okay. <laughs> Hillary Duff, yeah. Um, do you have a YouTube channel and do you teach Ableton classes tips and stuff? No, I, I don't really, um, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I've, I've done some type of like Ableton. They're not tutorials. I don't think that's my strong suit. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a teacher or whatever, like, um, but I do like nerding out on this stuff and that's kind of what I'm doing now. So my typical streams are a lot more like performance based where I'm playing and improvising, but, um, this was kind of a unique thing cause Twitch is, uh, supporting. So shout out. Shout out to Twitch. Uh, I actually really appreciate it. It's awesome. That's why I'm like on the front page right now. Um, did you, uh, how did you learn to produce? Did you go to school? Oh, it's completely self-taught. I learned before YouTube, before any of that, before internet. Like I just basically just had to like figure it out as, uh, as I go. So I'm 35, but I've been doing this since I was um, 15. So I've been doing it for a while. Yeah, Radiohead. <laughs> Also, shout out to Athena for uh, <laughs> for moderating. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, report that crash. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, what I'm gonna do. Um, Oh, uh, real quick, uh, what does RIC stand for? So I've kind of dropped the meaning, but it stands for Remix Artist Collective. And um, yeah, so that's that's where it started. It's a long story, it's not that exciting, but I basically kind of dropped the meaning of it and because I do original work now. So uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a title, it's sort of an umbrella that I put out music under, if that makes sense. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna, um, how we do it? Hey. Okay, cool. Uh, sometimes when I restart, like it's, it doesn't go to the streaming computer. Uh, yeah. Okay, what I'm gonna do is similar to the other things. I'm just gonna play the full track. I'm gonna mute my mic, and then I'll come back and walk walk you through it. So, a song called "Next to You" featuring Emerson Leaf. They try to tell me I shouldn't waste my time with you. You keep me hanging on to every. Delicate word falling out your mouth I think about it more than necessary yeah. I try to play, it ain't nothing to You know that you make it look good I bet you get it all the time though, don't ya? Yeah. 
Cool. So uh, that's next to you. I was trying to answer some of the questions while I was, uh, um, yeah, while I was in here. But by the way, fall português, sim, sou português. Yeah, but I, I've lived in the U.S. for for since 2005. So um, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get into uh, I'm gonna get into just the different parts here. So the drums are pretty simple. There's actually like so a lot of me just snapping pretty simple stuff and then when the drums come in it's a little bit bigger So this is actually, this is a bedroom. This is technically a bedroom. So you could argue, arguably say that all my releases are bedroom recordings. <laughs> and I definitely have recorded stuff in here, yeah, for sure. Okay, that's the drums, they're pretty simple. There's really not, again, like a lot of stuff on this record is like fairly basic. I let the, I let all the other instruments sort of take the, you know, um, take the spotlight. I kind of like that. Like, Uh, bass. Just because I have a whole album to get through, I gotta, I gotta move a little quicker. Hey, buddy. Uh, Chuck, I think I missed your question, but um, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is like, oh, actually, so I have like Nicky Romero's kick, which is like just reinforcing the bass on the, with the kick, you know, basically. Pretty simple stuff. Um, it's all the Juno 60. Somebody was asking like what my favorite synth is and um, it's, uh, this one over here. Okay, moving on to synths right now. Uh, no, I haven't used like phone recordings. That that's a little too lo-fi. <laughs> oh yeah, Bo has a lot to say. Uh, Todd, this is a song that came out on my new record. Um, it's called "Next to You." 
So yeah, a couple of like Juno tracks, like some pretty simple melodies. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to this. Let me add the, the, the drums here. Actually, I skipped over all the guitars. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of an important part. Um, yeah. Again, it's like, you know, the Gibson through <laughs> yeah I, I don't mean to knock like phone recordings like they could like uh, yeah like you can make that work but for vocals you kind of want something at least with a basic microphone hey buddy what do you want So I actually wrote this song for um, the artist Quinn92. That was a, my original intent, but um, he was actually into a different track. So, um, so yeah, like I, uh, I ended, up, ended up going with Emerson Leaf, and he really kind of killed it, I think. It's pre-chorus. Pretty, like just kind of different layers. I mean, there's not really, the, these parts are not terribly complex. Um, I try to keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, no touchy. Oh, and uh, Roger, so yeah, I, um, I, uh, I, I kind of went over this a, like more in depth, like if you, if you want to like check out the, the full stream later, but like I, I go into super detail, like how I program, but basically I do it all programmed. I don't, I don't play anything. It's more fun that way. So that's guitarist. Um, let me just show you this. This is the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Raj. Pre appreciate that. Um, like a reverse delay. Just something to kind of... Oh, there's this one guitar line that I kind of like. That's it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, keys. Uh, yeah, there's like kind of a piano. There's sort of this descending line that I, I, I liked and I kind of built the song around it, so. It's so simple, three notes, you know, or like four. Some vibra vibraphone. So yeah, it's the, it's kind of, I wanted to kind of give it like a vintage kind of just vibe. Like that's, that's all I can, that's the only way I can really describe it. Although the bridge is sort of inspired by house music. So, so. Uh, thank you, El Kobe. Appreciate that. I'm, I'm still kind of catching. Like sometimes I miss. If, if, I'm sorry if I miss the subs. I'm, I'm I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> um. 
Just don't keep me hanging on to you. Just don't keep me hanging. Just don't keep me hanging on to you. to the vocals a little bit um hey try to tell me let me stop that delay it's like a super long delay and it's like always in the background hey try to tell me i shouldn't waste my time with you you keep me hanging on to every delicate word falling out your mouth I think about it more than necessary. Yeah. I try to play, it ain't nothing new. Oh, actually, uh, somebody was asking uh, about the album. Here, I'll just give you a link, um, and you can, you know, pick whatever, um, like basically pick whatever platform you want. So, you can check that out. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Yeah, he he's he wants to be fed right now, but he's gonna have to wait. Um, Okay, cool. And th thanks, thanks, guys, for uh, answering some of the qu some of the questions that have been answered before. I appreciate that. I'm just trying to trying to keep <laughs> keep a schedule here. <laughs> okay, vocals. Uh, I think about feel it when I'm next to you. Oh, he did this like really cool, like kind of high pitch thing. Like crazy, you tell me that you feel it too. You make everything feel like it's brand new. No, I, ha I actually haven't done like um, I haven't done this for for other records uh, because I wasn't really streaming then, so m you know maybe I will now. Um, but yeah, this is this this isn't my typical type of stream. But here, let me I'm gonna get into I'm gonna get into the next one. What to lose? <laughs> I'm like <laughs> so far behind. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really have a schedule, but yeah, it's like I'm two two hours deep, so. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, maybe I'll bring I'll talk about the tour because I unfortunately, obviously, had to you know postpone it. So. Um, yeah, it's 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 unfortunate, but uh, I, I literally announced a tour on the day the NBA got canceled. So <laughs> talk about timing. Uh, but yeah, no, it kind of is what it is. So yeah, of course I'd love to come to Mexico. I mean, I, I I was just there in December, I think. But yeah, it just is what it is. Oh, this this track is already out. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it came out on May eighth. Yeah. It's called Next to You. I'm just kind of scrolling through the comments. It's a little bit quicker now. So, uh, if, I, if I miss your uh, if I miss your question, it's just uh, that's why. <laughs> okay, this is like still loading the next one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it is a Grammy. I I won in 2017. Yeah, which was fun. That was cool. Uh, thanks, Maddie. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, no. I, I realize that I realize I'm on the front page, so there's probably like a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of people uh, coming in. They're like, "Who, who this? Who this?" Uh, so, uh, oh, so I, I won um, in the it, not, it, it was the uh, uh, best remix category. So, I uh, 
it was the in 2017 oh, it was for my bob moses remix yeah <laughs> yeah uh some people are like who, who are you it's like well it's you can look at my username dude <laughs> uh i'm just kidding oh this is still loading these sessions are just super heavy so yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bo's still grooming. Okay, I think we're almost there. I'm gonna see if Liz will feed them because I, I'm gonna be here for a while. Oh, TSP. <laughs> Actually, okay, so I'm gonna, same thing. Um, I'm going to play the whole song and then um, and then go through it. So this is uh, a song called Toulouse uh, featuring Mink. So check it out. Can't even hide it. Monochromatics turning into colors in my head. Breaking the silence I thought I heard you say And maybe we could be friends I repeat the same mistakes They always come to find me So cynical and cold But you don't go <laughs> Thanks everybody. Shout out to Liz for f feeding them. <laughs> that is a happy boy now. Um, yes, this this whole album is out, so you can go check it out. Um, yeah, it's called uh, it's called Boy. Just search R A C Boy, and you'll find it. Okay, so again, let's let's go through the song. This is a unique one because I actually wrote it all in the same room with her, and and another person named Alex. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, every song is a different singer. That's the whole point. Okay, let me show you the drums just because I've been starting there. This one's pretty simple. Like the the D fifty five mixed with addictive drums too, so like this is the D fifty five. It's kind of a vintage thing. Some percussion like And 
in this weird like I don't know what that is, but something. This ends. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I honestly have been playing like a ton of Factorio too. <laughs> Um, okay, I gotta move through quicker. Base, uh, not a whole lot. Again, just sort of like a basic, well, basic baseline. Also, using the XLN retro retro color RC20, it's like I use my Fender Jazz Bass for this. So Bo, now he's like he's stoked because because uh, like he's he's probably like Juno's probably not gonna finish her food and he's gonna go get like second helping so he's like he's happy. <laughs> um, so that's a base, nothing nothing too special. Um, the guitar is also pretty simple. And uh, Roger, so when I record guitar, it's like through through an amp, and then into an isolation cab, and then into the computer. So I don't I don't never plug in direct, always through an amp. Yeah. Oh, I ha I played Satisfactory for sure. Like I love that game actually. It's great. show you the second chorus. Um, yeah, just kind of a, a lot of different layers of guitars and <laughs> I keep finding more guitars. Always like real amp distortion. It's just more fun. Okay, there's some there's some synths in here. There's a marimba's actually. It's pretty low. Oh, uh, Roger. So like I I actually I, I did like a studio tour video. If you search, uh, I think it's on YouTube. If you search RAC studio tour, I I go like super in depth into like all of that. So, um, but I'm I'm totally gonna do that on stream, but probably not this one. But but yeah. I wanted that like 80s, um, like basically like FM synth sound, you know, like Phil Collins, basically. Oh, okay. This is this is one of my favorite parts, really, the entire record. Um, this uh, it, it was actually a synth line, but it's also a trumpet. So I'll play the whole. Play the whole thing like actually let me play it the full part and then i'll solo out the instruments Don't get okay that's it <laughs> uh but here let me show you the individual parts Oh, sorry, here's the synth part first, which is the core game I sent this one here. So I sent that to Ariel, the trumpet player that I mentioned before, and uh, he, he sent this back. It's like jazzy, it's really nice. Thank you. 
Some electric keys. But really, like, the whole point of the song is to sort of let the vocal shine. And, um, you know, like, she has such a phenomenal voice that, I, I don't know, I, I kind of try to stay out of the way. So a lot of this stuff is very subtle, just like really small things, you know. Cool, so. Oh, there's some, there's there are some strings. There's fake strings, but. Oh, right here. Unfreeze these. Okay, I want to show you that with uh, the keys and maybe the synths. Okay, now getting to the, like I said, the main event, which is really the vocals. Um, I mean, what a voice, like, she recorded this like in a couple takes too, it was just like, oh, she's so good. <laughs> Can't even hide it, monochromatics turning into colors in my head. Breaking the silence, I thought I heard you saying maybe we could be friends. I repeat the same mistakes, they always come to find me So cynical and cold, but you don't go Why does it feel like I've never been here before? Now that I'm yours, now that I'm yours to lose Why am I scared of thinking of wanting you more? Now that I'm sure um, let me see if I can. Lonely makes for chances wasted, and moments fade if they're not embraced. So why does it feel like I've never? Let me do with the orchestra, oh, fake orchestra. Lonely makes for chances wasted, and moments fade if they're not embraced. So why does it feel like I've never? Now that I'm yours, now that I'm yours. Yeah, um, cool. So that's that's to lose. Um, which the title, uh, well, the song is to lose, but um, we thought it'd be funny to like call it to lose after the French city. So that's where that came from. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to um, open up the next one. Oh, which is uh, Gomes, actually. Okay, making my way, making my way through downtown. <laughs> uh, do I melodyne? Um, no, well, sometimes, but not, not, well, it depends. It depends if it needs it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm a little bit lagging on, on questions, so if I miss yours, apologize, but uh, I'm trying to read all of them. Um, <laughs> dramatic cats, cat, cat cam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, she she's just phenomenal. Like, I mean, what, what a voice. Like, I, I feel so lucky to work with pe these people. Like, yeah. So Mink, yeah, you got, okay, you guys mentioned it.
Yeah, well, I'm actually. Uh, somebody's asking about um, stuck on you. Yeah, I'm like almost there. How much you on time? <laughs> okay, so this is actually an interlude, and uh, I call the song Gomes because again the album's about my childhood, and I, I grew up in Portugal. And one of my favorite things to do was like after school, uh, we'd always like go by this like candy shop and buy like a big bag of candy, uh, and we call them Gomes. I mean that's just what you call it in Portugal. So it was, uh, yeah, it was like it's sort of like a childhood memory of mine. So the song is sort of inspired by that and definitely by like video games and like Zelda and like all that stuff. So again, I'm going to play it and then I'll sort of go through. So it's a super short song. It's it's meant as like an interlude, basically. Um, I'll, I'm I'm gonna run through this one really quickly because it's yeah. There, it's just like it's the Roland Juno 60, which is this one, and then there's a couple interesting elements in here. It's this like a pulse wave. Uh... Oh, thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, shout out to the SAC crew, <laughs> SAC crew, <laughs> Patreon, whatever. I mean, there's so many names for it at this point. Um, yeah, uh, so that's the same line as stuck on you. And speaking of which, I'm just going to kind of move to that one. Um... Okay, a tattoo. Which one? I have a lot. So these are my albums. Somebody was asking about it in music out. It's like, I have a lot. So Stranger's the first one, Ego's the second one, and Boy's the most recent one. So, and then this is my first tattoo. It says Midlife Crisis. <laughs> um, I got this recently, a little snake too. Um, these are patterns, so they kind of go together. These are sign uh, different waveforms. Um, I got this one. This is a piece at the Met. It's from the like Greek Hellenistic period, and um, it's like this giant thing, and uh, yeah, this is made by Ori here in Portland, and um, yeah, I'm sort of like trying to think of like what else do I have? I have, a, I have like a Blade Runner quote here, and like a whole bunch of other stuff. I have my cats right here. Yeah, snakes. Yeah, not a, but it's like a cute snake though. Like it's like it's kind of cute. I feel like you, you everybody's got to get a snake tattoo at some point, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's uh it says um the quote the quote from Blade Runner is um I like tears and rain. I was I was like it's like what is it? <laughs> Oh, uh, Quinn 92. Yeah. So that was, um, well, we, we, it, it's not out. We, we've sort of, t we talked about releasing something and nothing is really materialized. Yeah. So we don't, don't have anything yet, but, um, hopefully, hopefully soon. 
Oh yeah, so FIFA. Okay, so I grew up playing FIFA. Like I, I feel like I discovered like Fat Boy Slim and FIFA '98 and like all this stuff. So it was a real treat for me. Like much, much later to like be asked. You know, they they asked me to. Um, you know, I've had like three songs in FIFA games and. Uh, more specifically, back of the car was just like in I think 2016, um, and yeah, that was wild. It was kind of crazy. I was like, oh my god, this is happening. <laughs> I mean, I was like stoked about it, but um, a little surprising, you know, to be honest. Um, hmm. All right, computer. There we go. Okay, same thing. Stuck on you. Um, I am going to. I'm going to play the whole song and then we're uh I'm going to go through it. Driving along saw a cliff that's a pretty big fall like a break a rib and if I drove off I could start again but I won't side of the road stretch my neck it's so cold outside I could see my breath and if I slept here I would catch my death but I won't Instead, I stare at my screen while paper's still you and me. It's been a month and two weeks. Yeah, I've been counting the days. Nowhere to hide, no matter how far I drive. If I'm dead or alive, I can't seem to escape. I'm just stuck on, stuck on you. There ain't nothing I can do. Stuck on, stuck on you There ain't nothing I can do, do yeah. Sleeping alone, head on fire I keep the TV on just to occupy Cause I get too bored, can't control my mind And then I'm scared I'm holding my breath Making it last, running on feelings that are both from the past. When you were so close, wish I could go back, but I can't. So I just stare at my screen while paper's still you and me. It's been four months and a week. Yeah, I've been counting the days. There's nowhere to hide, no matter how far I drive. If I'm dead or alive, I can't seem to escape. I'm just stuck on, stuck on you There ain't nothing I can do I'm just stuck on, stuck on you There ain't nothing I can do, do yeah. I slept with new people, I muted your gram I focus on friendships cause I hope they will last I stay home on weekends to process the past Supposed to be angry, but that's not the vibe. I miss you like crazy, but I know we were right. I try to stay hopeful, but I'm lonely at night. I'm just stuck on, stuck on you. I'm just stuck on you. Yeah. There ain't nothing I can do. I'm just stuck on, stuck on you. shout out to feel good <laughs> yeah so this is the single off the album um and uh yeah so it's uh, I'm, I'm it's like it, it came together pretty quickly i mean a lot of these songs end up go, like the the when something connects it just kind of goes quickly so um yeah i the, the, this one was kind of interesting because he had written this demo and i just really lashed on to it i thought i felt like it was really gonna work so uh yeah oh uh shauna yeah um i recently started learning ableton it's everyone yeah it's it, there's a little bit of a learning curve but um but once you i don't know if you if you spend the time with it i think it's worth it okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go through the different parts and, and thank you all thank you all for being here appreciate you <laughs> okay so drums first Oh, so this percussion, I uh, finally get to show it off a little bit. 
So it's like me hitting this desk actually with like a um, with like different uh, like with my fingers or with like a, a piece of wood or something like that like <laughs> it's so simple but like Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, 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 it's sort of a theme with a lot of these, a lot of these songs. The drums are just fairly simple. I'm, I'm not overcomplicating it, like adding crazy fills or anything like that. It's, it's just as long as it hits well, like and it has like a locks in like kind of a groove, you know. Uh, so, uh, do I quantize the swing? Um, no, it's all kind of manually programmed. I just kind of move it, you know until it feels right. There's some addictive drums too. I think it's just, just hi-hats. Oh, okay, so I'm using the Juno. This one, I just turn off the oscillators and um, and uh, basically like it, it, I'm able to like play it as, as if it was like, it's basically noise essentially, yeah. Uh, thank you, back the car, thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, moving on. Bass. Bass. <laughs> so simple. So again, you don't need to overcomplicate it. Like, but if you just like lock in that groove, like. Just like just a variation on that. Claps. <laughs> so, so basic. Okay, guitars. Let me move on. Okay, so this is um, I sampled my guitars and basically just kind of like chopped them up and moved around. So. some reverse stuff here. Oh wait, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've been like, I've been like, uh, my bad. Thanks, thanks for reminding me guys, sorry. <laughs> I was like, hey, check it out, like it's so cool. <laughs> Actually, on, on one of my previous streams, there was this point where I was like, okay guys, I'm gonna show you this brand new song. I'm really stoked about it. Uh, and uh, and then I like, I didn't have my settings right, so I didn't go through the stream. So I heard it, so I was like, I was like yeah, I love this part. <laughs> and like, nobody heard anything. So it was just like silence for like three minutes. It was kind of funny. That's how you know it's live. Cool. So this is the, the sample guitars that I was talking about. bridge here. Um, cool, moving on to synths. So I, in the last uh, song that I went through, Gomesh has this piano or this like synth line basically going. Yeah. 
and it's sort of present in the previous track as well. So. I like to kind of throw it on the offbeat so it feels more like. Let me show you with the drums too, so. It's most likely uh, the uh, R the RE two hundred one the Space Echo, just the reverb though. Okay, it's like nothing in the song. Right? Juno sixty. Um, let's see here. I got this. Oh, I muted. <laughs> Uh, this is actually something that Phil was like messing around with. This is, obviously didn't make it into the song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, keys. What do we got here? I just want to show you some of the string stuff that I did because I think it came out pretty cool. Onto the vocals here. Seem to escape. I'm just stuck on, stuck on you. You, you. There ain't nothing I can. Actually, the the we did some cool stuff in the pre-chorus. Down in the day, there's nowhere to hide. No matter how far I drive, if I'm dead or alive. Oh no, I think we did it on the second. Holding my breath. Sleeping there in my screen. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Nowhere to hide, no matter how far. Yeah, so it's just kind of mimicking the strings, but I thought it was cool. Um, so the colors are, are organized always because I built, I always work off of a template. So, I mean, there's no meaning behind them. Like, pink is always vocals. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a, a color code, basically. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Together. Making our way through the album, guys. Seriously, I, pre I appreciate y'all being here. I really do. Um, yeah, I've, I've been... Uh, yeah, I've been doing more like kind of performance-based uh, streams, which has been a lot of fun. I'm basically like building, uh, and I'm sure like some of the people in the, in the chat can can vouch for it. But I'm basically like building like an like a, a live streaming system. So it's not like performing. It's not. Um, it's not like I'm not DJing. It's not. I'm not getting up there and like jumping around with some CDJs. Like it's like it's it's kind of like it's taking like all the songs that I've already made and p picking out different samples, little parts of them, and then mixing them all together, putting them in the same key. And then I can just like during the stream, just like improvise. And, um, it's a lot of fun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like pretty into it and I'm continuing to develop it. And like, for, for example, like I've, uh, I've done like, uh, right now we're version like 0 0.3. So it's still like pr pretty new. Um, and the whole idea is like to build it with the stream and like interact with people and get feedback and like, you know, see how people react to certain things and, 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 and like kind of approach it that way. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting, 
um, it's it's I, I see this I see live streaming as sort of a new medium, you know. Uh, like, the, the, this this isn't possible anywhere else, you know. Like I can, I can play shows, you know, and it's you know it's structured. It's an hour or whatever, hour fifteen, and um, you know, but like I, I can't like I can't get on the mic and like talk to people and like have like a back and forth. So like I, I really I'm really into it. Like it's it's sort of a new frontier for me. But um, yeah, we'll see see where where this goes. <laughs> that moment when it asks you to save changes and you haven't changed anything. So I, I'm, I saved separate versions for Twitch. So it was like, so I knew that I wasn't going to mess up anything up basically. Um, this makes me appreciate the songs more after seeing the work that goes into it. Yeah, no, I, I, I hope that that's true because I guess maybe this is sort of a, a, th a theory maybe that I have is, um, I think the process of making music is more interesting than the end results. And that's just true for me. Um, obviously, everybody always hears the final result, but the process of getting there, the problem solving, everything, the like all the little intricate details, that's the stuff I love. And that's that's why I make music, you know. Um, and at the end of it, people get to enjoy like a final song. But like for me, it was like about how I got there, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks. Glad you like uh, cheap sunglasses. How do you sound? How do you avoid sounding overplayed? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I'm going to again. This is a song called "Together" featuring Evelyn. I'm going to play through the whole thing and then play through the different parts. So here we go. Cool. That's uh, it's together featuring Evelyn. Um, yeah, just gonna continue going through these parts real quick. 
Um, you, you can probably tell some of this starts to get a little bit repetitive because it's a lot of the same ideas, just sort of expanded. But nevertheless, here we go. So this is actually, I, I worked with um, this uh, also, this is, usually I don't work with other producers, but in this case there was another producer involved that had already done some of the production, so I kind of used his parts. Uh, Nico Pop, shout out to Nico. <laughs> And then like the half, the double time. The claps. Cool. Uh, bass, let's see here. <laughs> There's actually uh, like barely any bass at all. Um, I do kick and snare for side tuning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the double time. This one, there's a yeah, there's a bit of guitars, in, especially in the verses. that sort of more distorted part and then it kind of it comes back to the to the verse basically it's a lot softer so um maybe i'll just talk about kind of one production trick that i use a lot is like using silence as a way to sort of focus things so if you'll notice that like the vocals leading up to the chorus are actually pretty affected but then right before it it drops out so out for that get back together part. Get back together. Get back together. Okay, moving on synths here. these parts I forget about. I think there's some strings here, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm using the Gibson SG uh, for guitar. Okay, uh, yeah, somebody's asked Master Bus. 
Um, it's not it's not that complicated. Um, okay, yeah, I use the the good hertz wow control for like tape warble stuff. The Eosis Air EQ. Actually, it's not even doing anything, so never mind. Um, the API 2500. Lowest plugin. I used to have the real thing, sold it, <laughs> got the plugin. And then just a basic compressor and a limiter, that's it. Um, if you get the sounds right on the way in, you don't need to do a whole lot. Some people like talk about like the mastering chain is like this magical thing. It's like if you're if you're having to fix everything in the master, then you, you're not doing it right beforehand. That's my take on it. Some pe whatever people might argue with me on that, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, vocals. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking back the things I said when you got drunk to meet my friends. You do get a little bit nervous. I like when you're not perfect because it makes me feel like I'm the only one who gets to know the real you. And if it's broken, I'm all good knowing you and I. Oh, the fight got really bad. You caught. I want to show the bridge. It's pretty cool. Um, as far as the EQing, again, it's, it kind of goes back to that theory of like make sure it's right on the way in and you don't have to fix like EQing is sort of fixing stuff you know I mean whatever that's not completely true but um but yeah it's uh I don't, I don't do a whole lot of EQing if I uh, like unless I need to fix something um or or maybe like cutting the lows or the highs you know something like that here's the bridge together, I know we do our best but some words are left unsaid and we don't keep all our promises ah. so if it's broken i'm a good knowing you and i got something unspoken and if it shattered Okay, cool. Moving on to Carefree. I have it all numbered, and um, I have to like remember what song is which. <laughs> yeah, a lot of tape echo for sure. Um, well, it's sort of a mix of like using. For example, like I'll I'll like really tune one like really really harsh, and and then have one that's natural and the two together kind of work, you know. All right, see you, Roger. Thank you. Um, yeah, check out the record. Appreciate that. Um, tape echo. Yeah, I was using the EP thirty four, I think. Oh, and uh, just going back to another question about uh, Melodyne versus Autotune. I prefer Melodyne. It gives me a lot more control. It's a lot nicer. Okay, let me see how many songs we have. Carefree, Oakland, and then, yeah, a whole bunch more. <laughs> it's going to be a late night. <laughs> I'm moving through these a lot quicker though. I don't use Valhalla, Valhalla um, but uh, I've heard good things though. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks for checking out on Apple. Appreciate that. <laughs> How do you decide what to layer? Uh, it's just intuition. Yeah. Just try and stuff, see what works. Yeah, you could cut into two days. Um, actually, kind of debating. Um, just because it's, I'm like I'm basically like halfway now, so actually maybe I will. Um, I honestly didn't think it would take this long, but maybe okay. Maybe I'll show this one because it was a single, and maybe I'll call it. And then because um, I've already been streaming, I think for yeah three hours, so I'm a little bit out of it. And then I can spend some more time on the rest of the record. 
So yeah, I think I might do that. So yeah, check it, follow, whatever, check it out. Um, okay, uh, same thing, this is Carefree. It was, uh, it was the second single off the record um, featuring an artist named Light. So, um, oh, th thanks for the sub, appreciate that. So again, I'm just gonna play the whole song. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm like losing my voice. It's probably, it's probably a good time to, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna mute it. And I'm gonna mute the mic and play the whole song. So here we go. Yeah, this was um so just to give it some context i i did this a uh i scored a ballet in in 2019 and i got like more interested in classical music and and piano based music so like that i it was i didn't really set out to do that but like when i run and wrote this like oh okay that's where that's coming from it was like sort of inspired by it so uh that ep is called closer by the way if you want to check that out um just search rac uh slash uh, closer uh, I'm just going to answer some of these questions. They're good questions. Um, so, well, do I ever sing on? No, I don't. I don't. Well, I sing like I, I'll, I'll record like a vocal, like pad, and then maybe like use it as a sample. But that's about it. Um, how do you how do you determine which reverbs and delays to use on your sense? Oh, I just use the same. I just always use the same exact ones. I just I like them. That's it. That's pretty much it. I don't I don't use any effects on tracks. I use it all in returns basically. Um, Oh, how do you find all the sounds separately? Oh, I, 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 I make them. I make everything from scratch, basically. Yeah, the vocals I work with different vocalists, but um, but yeah, everything is like created from scratch. I don't use any samples at all. I mean, aside from like drum hits, but that's yeah, that's the same. Um, yeah. So the the routing. Um, yeah, I can I can kind of get into that real quick. So the drums and bass go into low. Uh, guitar, synth, and keys, and orchestra go into mid, and then vocals go into high. It's just a way to quickly separate them. Yeah, basically. That, that's pretty much it. Um, what effect is the... 
yeah yeah more desk percussion yeah um what effects is the pitch shift on the on the vocal um it is little altar boy which is a great name for a plugin <laughs> uh it's made by uh sound toys i think yeah yeah so i have a splice pack um but i i also have a new one that i'm about to release okay i'm gonna get into these parts and i'll take a few more questions before i call it but super simple percussion i mean look at this, this is like nothing that's it like it's the most basic kind of it's the d55 just a kick and a like little hit that's it it's kind of ironic considering the amount of gear that i have that is just <laughs> something so basic <laughs> Like, I'm kind of, it's a little bit of Michael Jackson, you know, so, ry rhythmically, you know. No, actually, this one, I would say the the, um, the percussion is actually quite on, on the grid for this one. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, it's been a long stream for sure. <laughs> yeah, I grossly underestimated how long this would take. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work, you know? So I, I would actually like, now that I, the more I think about it, 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 it definitely is better if I kind of split this up at this point, but, um, and then I could spend more time on, on everything. Um, okay, so guitars. Okay, this one's actually fun. Cause like, these are actually all little chopped up pieces. I didn't really play these all at once. I just like moved them around. <laughs> I could never play that like I mean I could maybe if I practice enough but I'm too lazy I was just like it's easier just to record the little parts and then you can hear the edits like if you solo it It's just mimicking the piano part so that's pretty much it um yeah yeah okay so so there, there's no effects on that it's really just for routing um it's just easier like if i need to if i need to bring the mids down i can just quickly go oh actually this you can't really see it um i can just quickly go to um like minus one or, or like or, or like bump it down like a couple db it's it's just a, a simple mixing thing it's, it's nothing it's just easier than going to like all the groups and bringing them down individually, if that makes sense. Um, all effects are, are always on buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. Synth. So th the song is primarily piano based, but halfway through it turns into a little bit synthier, so. Oh yeah, so there's, there, in the chorus there's operator, so two operators. Yeah, Ath Athena, the time does fly. When I, I've, I actually have been having like a ton of fun. This is great, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, and then the Juno comes in. I, I just love this instrument. Like it's, it's, it's. I've had it for so long. It, sort of a drone with the MS-10 here.
I feel this to me like reminds me. I mean, it's on piano, but it reminds me of like, I don't know, like some kind of like Zelda thing. Like, um, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I can't describe it. Like, it's one of those where you like enter a new town or something like that. You know. And then, like I mentioned, the drone here. It's just just to add sort of some kind of build basically okay a, lo a lot of this stuff is happening on the piano so here i'll show you that it, even but even with that it's like pretty simple so this is all programmed i didn't play any of this and i, I went in here and nudged these you know so they're not perfectly in time and this is a manual process. I, I don't like a lot of people will be kind of lazy about it. <laughs> like, just throw a randomizer in there. It's like, no, you really gotta, really gotta work at it. So then there's there's like a, a higher melody. Um, this piano it's just like a super reverbed out like but here in context here let me show you it's the same Alicia Keys ones it's it's a contact library Alicia's Keys, I think is what it's called. <laughs> okay, then I have this build thing here. It's just a reverse piano, basically. Um, orchestra, do I have anything? Yeah. I call it orchestra, it's all fake strings, but. It's just reinforcing the synths, really. It's, there's not a whole lot. Okay, vocals. Um, so, um, I, I gotta give this a little bit of context. So, this, uh, this demo was originally not one of my favorites. I, I didn't feel like it really f had a place on, on the record. I, uh, like I, I like the idea, but it wasn't. It just didn't seem like it fit. And um, I sent it off to Light, which is the vocalist on this, and she sent this vocal back, and I was just. It kind of blew my mind. Like I was super impressed by it, and like I, she did something like so unique and so different with it that um, it became one of my favorite songs in the album. So it's like it kind of, it kind of shifted, um, you know it kind of changed the whole song for me. So let's listen to it. And it's actually, it's pretty noisy. So just a heads up, like. Wake up my darling girl, you're late for school. Those were the old days and these are the new. When I get myself out of bed and a silence voice in my head. When I drink coffee, then my stomach hurts. God knows I need it, so don't know what's worse. Then I get on the interstate and the traffic's bad and I'm late. I know that I'm being strange Carve my apples with the blade Call me now, I'm ignoring it I don't wanna conversate I just wanna turn on music and sit here I'm riding with the top down Pretending nobody's around I wish I was carefree like you see in the movies my friends don't understand i'm not happy i'm not sad i'm just coasting on a whip trying not to go insane but i wish i was carefree like you see in the movies so how do i give myself yeah so i mean she's she's awesome she's just awesome and she completely changed the song for me so props to light <laughs> um 
cool. Friends don't understand. I'm not happy, I'm not sad. I'm just coasting on a whip, trying not to go insane. But I wish I was gay. I wish I was gay. Like you see in the movie. Like you see in the movie. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some bleed in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, she, she just wrote this whole top line on top of like that little piano line. It's kind of amazing. And yeah, like the, the, um, yeah, it was her, uh, she just kind of sent me all of this and I just piece it together. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, a panning. Um, again, it's an intuitive thing. It's like, well, I'm kind of sick of hearing it on this side. So let me put it over here. That's basically it. I, I'm actually not a huge fan of panning. I, I like again. This sort of goes back to like just kind of keeping it simple. Like um, focus on what's important. Keep it relatively centered. Don't go too crazy. Um, that that's my take on it. Some people go some people go like super wide. I don't I don't like wide stuff. I like it to be like sort of like right there in the middle. You know, stereo is nice, but like it's because like it's it's gonna be played like you know somebody's gonna play it on their iphone you know on their iphone speaker and i want it to at least sound good there so <laughs> that's kind of my approach to that um yeah and they're definitely distorted so i i kind of mentioned this in the earlier in the stream but i used a lot of rc20 which is this plugin right here um, um here we go this guy but i don't use any of this stuff i just use the distortion because i like the distortion on it um Okay, guys, I think uh, I think my voice is, is going out and I've been going for three and a half. So, but I just want to say uh, I really appreciate you guys for being here. Um, this has been awesome. I'm, I'm streaming uh, three times a week, doing more of like, you know, typical performance type of stuff. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. And uh, also, like, you know, I really have to kind of give a shout out to Twitch because like I've been kind of streaming on my own for like a couple, I don't know, like since quarantine started and like Twitch really kind of like, like supported this and, you know, helped me get on the front page and all that stuff today. So uh, this, it's awesome. I think I'm really going to, uh, I'm going to focus on that. So yeah, I uh, hope, hope to see you guys at the next one. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try to, I'll, I'll figure out when I'll do the rest of the record, but um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and also, I guess maybe I'll, I'll just shout out the Patreon crew. Um, you guys are always, always supportive. And uh, I'll see you in the Discord. Peace out. See you guys. <laughs>